Hello everyone and welcome back. Heart of Immer Slayer has gone through a number of rough patches to nerf its effectiveness on the field. And although it has now been reined in, it's still quite good under certain circumstances. Which is why today, I'm going to make this build even better by applying a trending weapon to the mix, the Buried Bloodline. With this weapon's perk, it will not only grant easy healing with the consistent arc source we have, but will also grant grenade regen upon kills, which will feed back into Heart of Immer Slayer's effect and so forth. Simply put, Ha is in a good spot, but it can be better if we improve his key weaknesses. This is how we're going to do it. Starting with Aspects, you're going to want to have Touch of Thunder, which allows our pulse grenades to create ion traces periodically and also get stronger the longer it is out. Then you want Knockout, where critically wounding a target will increase your melee damage and start regaining your health. The following allows us a basic level of creating a fantastic build that increases our base ability attacks through the gameplay. Knockout in endgame is good when activated at the right time, but not reliable with how often you get one-shotted. For Fragments, Spark of Ions, where defeating dual targets create ion traces. Spark of Recharge, where while critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy recharge faster. Spark of Magnitude, where lingam grenade durations are increased. And Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades drop targets. Running the best arc setup in game, the following fragments will make sure our arc abilities and pulse grenades provide the best amount of damage and energy going forward for the build. With this in mind, it will make it easier to manage half image like cooldown levels in between each ability usage. For the mods and stats, both resilience and discipline will be the two stats to invest in while using half image light. Resilience at tier 10 will be giving us a 30% damage reduction and a 21 second cooldown when using thrusters. The 30 second cooldown when using our thruster will be an important key here for allowing us to quickly refill our abilities once one has been actively used. It will also trigger both powerful attraction and reaper mods for easily sustaining a high armor charge flow as we play. You can reduce the stat down to a tier 8 to 9, but with endgame mobs capable of one-shotting you, you have a higher resilient stat will be important for the survival of the build. Also, by us having Devour on hand, it will allow us to get away with being flexible in these areas if need be. Lastly, having bolstering detonation on top of the Ion Traces regen is also beneficial in the long run. Our discipline is at tier 10, and at this level, we'll be getting a 1 minute, 1 second cooldown using our Pulse Grenades. Although it has a high cooldown rate, this is beneficial with how strong the Pulse Grenades are once in action. We do have Heart of Inmost Light, Grenade Kickstart, Ion Traces, Spark of Recharge, and Bomber in play, which will help to elevate the problems it may have. And now with Devour on hand, this will make sure that using a grenade is a lot more easier without the need of waiting so much. This next section now will be covering the armor charges and additional mods. Charged Up will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play and collect, while Stacks and Stacks will make sure our armor charges collected will always be two instead of one. Next, we have no harmonic mods as we have replaced it with the Ashes Assets mod instead. However, Powerful Attraction and Reaper is available and this will cover the need of creating orbs of power for the build. Afterwards, I then have added the Elemental Charge mod for allowing us to get armor charges faster when collecting ion traces as well, so this should keep the armor charges stack going for as long as you can maintain them. For weapons, we then have the Buried Bloodline which grants us Devour upon interaction and Grenade Regen as well. The pros to the weapon outweighs the cons that most people may have for it, since it offers one of the best neutral abilities that can be expanded on while simply playing, and if you have a build that plays aggressive and you need that fast sort of healing on demand, then the following weapon can help achieve that bonus. Bloodline paired with Art Titan actually provides a buff to Heart of Immer's Light in terms of regenerating its abilities fast, since that bonus grenade energy means we can garner energy extraordinarily faster. Since this also pairs well with this seasoned anti barrier weapon, it's actually got a lot going for it when you think about it. Primary, we then have the Rufus Fury with Hatching and Demolitioners, and this is a good combo to use when pairing with these seasonal mods we have for this season. With the extra demo perk, it means even faster grenade regen when combined with the rest of the kit, which is optional of course. Hatching is great for additional damage against targets from afar, so it works out in a way. This also works out well for overload champs, which is my main concern when being used in the endgame. However, the kept confidence with loose change and collective action is also a good weapon to use since we can consistently activate these perks via the Iron Lord Traces collected. It's actually an amazing choice once you see how consistent it is. 
Upon playing with the build, this is what you can see in its ups and downs with the player base, with most now abandoning the once powerfulest Titan Zotic in game, while others finding ways to make it work. I've seen those few players who've given the Zotic a second chance, and they have done pretty well with organising the energy returns gained from it. However, one easy way to help boost this Zotic effectiveness, once again, is by simply applying Berry Bloodline to the mix, since Devour and most energy focused builds tend to synergize the best. The amount of ability energy you are getting back is around 400% once active, which comes to about a quarter of energy given back to you. If you trigger its times 2 effect, then that will be the 800%, which is almost half energy returned. This is all the idea hard of image like exotic trait, which on its own is good but not amazing. Adding ionic traces and key mods will also help the build increase its potential even more, but Devour can help push this build to be even more aggressive in terms of energy return for all stats. As Devour provides healing and grenade region upon activation, if we focus the vast majority of stats on monsters to boost or grenade output by times 10, we can in action improve the rest of the stats and mods without needing to heavily invest in them. My discipline of resilient stat is already quite high to start with, since these are the main abilities being used the most, but discipline is the key stat where we'll be seeing everything in play. You've seen this type of build before, and probably will see plenty more of it as you play, but simply all I'm doing is improving the region rate of the build even more by just focusing on the strongest ability around. You can achieve the same thing via the Demolition weapon as well, but I want to show off how good of a pair Berry Bloodline is when combined with Ark, and also combined with the already powerful exotic that just need a few tweaks here and there. I also recommend you add a strong weapon to the build just so you can make use of these seasonal mods accompanying the season. Unraveling Orbs and Horse Shuttle both provide a debuff when applying and it works out well when paired with the Bloodline as any kills made by us will refresh the Devour and Grenade regen. The build, even after its many changes, still works out well when you fix some of its key weaknesses. Once those are actioned, the build becomes 10 times more fun and effective than you'll ever imagine. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub button here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.